Hello and welcome to another installment of GMBN Tech Ask. If you want us to feature your questions, then use hashtag AskGMBNTech down in the comments below. Now, let's get started. So Keith Hunter has said, how can you tell when it's time to change your cassette? I always struggle to know if a cassette is too worn and needs replacing. Uh, chains are easy thanks to chain checkers, but a cassette is an expensive consumable uh, that I want to get the most out of. Um, you're right, it is really hard to work out whether a cassette has worn. Uh, don't worry, even the professionals will struggle with that. Uh, I would say if you're keeping on top of replacing your chain, your cassette will last a lot longer. So do keep an eye on your chain checker. Uh, an 11 speed or a 12 speed, you'll wanna change that at about the 0.5% mark. Um, with anything less than 11 speed, so 10, 9, 8, you can get away with going up to 0.75 uh, because 11 and 12 is a little bit more finickety and you want to replace that more regularly. Um, and so I would say if you're keeping on top of that, your cassette is probably doing quite well. Um, you'll know if it's too worn because you'll put a new chain on it um, and the gears will be skipping and just noisy and not very nice at all, uh, really. So I think you can keep going as long as the chain is still working, the new chain that is. Uh, if you put a new one on and it's not working out, then it's probably time to change it. Um, the truth is you can just kind of run it until it's not really working out for you. Um, so sorry, it's not a definitive answer, but it kind of is. <laughs> um, so Vito Eckhart, um, I recently bought a new air spring for my RockShox Revelation to go from 130 to 140 mils of travel. Uh, the fork is taller now as you would expect, uh, but the fork still bottoms out at 130 mil. Why is that? Um, I started to think about this. I was thinking, is there too much air, some um, too much oil somewhere? Is there some air got captured? Um, but the truth is, without looking at your fork, I, I wouldn't be able to diagnose it. My question is, is it definitely getting 140 mils of travel? Um, some forks, um, if we get these down, uh, some forks, if you let all of the air out, it will still have a little bit of a, a bumper. Um, not all forks go, you know, straight from crown to lowers. Um, there might be a little bit in there. And that doesn't mean that you're bottoming out short or that there's something wrong with them or that they're trapped. Um, I would say let all of the air out and see where it goes down to and measure that distance and see if that distance that you actually travel down to is 140. If it is, it's not a problem. Um, if you're only getting 130 out of your new uh, 140 setup, then it's probably time to go to a specialist uh, like a bike shop or, a, to be honest, a suspension specialist so that they can diagnose the problem. Um, Marco Estenisleo um, said that I noticed my fork won't bottom out even with no air in the air side and the compression is fully open. Is it normal or is my damper broken? Um, well, as you just heard, Marco, um, some forks don't go all the way in. And it just is. It doesn't mean that it's broken. Uh, I would say check the model and see what travel you should be getting and let the air out and see if you're getting all of that travel. If you are, it's not a problem. Don't worry about it, is my advice. Uh, Jeeperson Lemosad. I am an XC rider and I am having problems with my cleat shoes. I set my cleats the same measurement, but my left foot is slightly bigger than my right foot. I am aching on my left foot every time I climb. Uh, perhaps my left shoe cleat uh, is in the middle of my left foot. Will it make it better if I adjust my left shoe cleats? Um, possibly. Uh, I would say if you're getting pains, 
then something's wrong. Um, and it's gonna be hard for you to work out how to fix what's wrong, but the best thing to do is try and move that cleat slightly, just a, a couple of mil at a time, see if it improves it, see if it gets worse, and just try and troubleshoot it yourself. Um, always make small changes and try and run it for a couple of rides before you decide if it's made things better or worse. Um, if you've got an abnormality, also it, it's probably a good idea to go to a bike fit specialist who will look at your placement on a bike and work out if your foot is in the right position and if it's gonna cause any problems. Um, the thing with in balances on the bike is if you keep running it like that, uh, you could do yourself a bit of an injury or create a really long-term problem. So I would try and play with things yourself, um, or if you can afford it, go to a bike fit specialist as soon as possible. Um, Adam Harkin says, why don't wheel suppliers such as Halo or Hope sell mullet wheel sets? Uh, it's a pain to buy 27.5 and 29 separately. Uh, generally, a wheel set of same sizes works out slightly cheaper. Um, yeah, sometimes it does work out a little cheaper, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and I think the reason why most companies don't do it is just because there's just so much variety. Uh, not only have you got sizes that people want to change, but they've also got free hub bodies and whips, boost, non-boost. There's so much variety, so many different SKUs in a bike shop that they probably can't bunch all of them into mullet and 29 and 27, and then also have all those varieties in hubs and hub spacing as well. Um, but it's not uncommon. Uh, we just talked about Chris King, who have released the MTN 30s, and they do come as either 27.5, 29, or mullet. So they are starting to sell mullet wheels um, in a set, and I'm sure other companies will start to follow soon enough. So watch this space. Uh, Stuart Dickens says, from any perspective or combination thereof, how bad are Rich's Crocs for mountain biking? Uh, right. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they have some great damping qualities when riding, and they certainly dry very quickly. Um, but for grip on flat pedals, probably not great. Uh, there's definitely no sweat wicking properties there. And I wouldn't say that that hill cup is very good for circular pedal motions either. Um, and absolutely no street cred whatsoever. Um, but I would say that strapping them to a bike packing rig or a bike packing bag um, is great for river crossings when you come to them on your journeys. So in terms of how bad are they? Pretty bad, but not bad for rivers. Um, Ernesto Carballo Lopez, what a name. Um, is it safe to apply WD-40 silicon spray lubrication to my suspension stanchions? Um, yeah, it's fine. Um, depending on the brand that you're looking at, you've said WD-40 here and, you know, muck off do a silicon spray as well and they actively promote you putting silicon spray on stanchions. Uh, reason being is that it creates a nice smooth, slippery-ish surface, which kind of reduces friction, but it also creates a protective uh, slippery layer for dust and um, dirt to sort of run right off it. Um, it's also, I use it for spraying on the stanchions and then I compress the suspension so that it draws all the dust away from the seals and then you can wipe it off um, and keep it nice and clean. And basically, as long as you make sure that you wipe it off properly, um, then it's fine. Because if you leave too much residue on there, it might actually attract dust, which is the opposite of what you want to do. But yes, uh, the short answer is it's fine. Just keep it away from your disc rotors though. You really don't want it on there. Make sure you cover them up when you're uh, spraying your bike. So Daniel Russell, 
uh, final question here. I currently have a size extra small frame and on the manufacturer's website, it says it suits riders up to five foot four, but I am five foot seven and I'm wondering what the disadvantages of riding a frame that's too small for you and whether I should buy a big bike or not. Um, well, if you like it and you get on with it, then why, why buy a new one? Um, there are recommendations, but some people will choose a bigger or a smaller bike. So you've asked about the disadvantages. The disadvantages of a bike that's too small for you is that it might be a little bit twitchy or it might feel a little unstable when you're going at high speeds. Perhaps you're not centered in the bike properly. Perhaps you're not behind the handlebars when you take impacts. That could be the disadvantages. Um, but you might like the fact that it's smaller and more maneuverable. Um, so I would say if you like it, then stick with it. The only reason I would say you should buy a bigger bike is if it's causing you discomfort. So if you're getting backache because you're scrunched up too much, maybe the top tubes um, not making you climb as well as you should in a nice position, then I'd say, yeah, maybe you need a bigger bike. But um, other than that, if you like it and you've been getting on with it, you know, why, why buy a different one just because someone recommended it? Um, so that's all we've got time for today. I uh, hope you've liked those answers. And if you've got any of your own, don't forget to use hashtag AskGMBNTech down in the comments below. Thanks for watching.